Once I said it a thousand times, you get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one. If they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Well, again, I'm going to... Can you imagine that? That is me in 2002 casting a spirit, a demonic spirit, an evil spirit out of people, which this generation says there ain't no such thing as it, and it can't be done, and nobody has that kind of power. Well, there we go again, straightway defies all of that, don't we? Oh, where is she? I tell you, it's amazing, isn't it? Amazing what religious spirits does, isn't it? Is it not? And we still cast out devils still till today. Amazing, isn't it? So who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe what the book says and do what it says? Are we going to believe pagan Christianity and its false religions and all these pagan Hebrews? Why, can you believe that? I'm on the phone. They know it's broadcast time. It's, well, maybe these heathens don't know it's broadcast time. But oh well. All right. But can you believe it? Now, I got these charlatan, evil bees lying slow bellies up in Green Bay. These jack leg book licking so called, so called Christians. They have never cast out one devil in their life. And they think that they are disciples of Christ. They haven't healed one sick person in all of their life. And they think that they are the disciples of Christ. They don't keep the commandments, but they believe they are the disciples of Christ. Man, I tell you, it's off the chain, isn't it? It just makes you shake your head. Religion is something else, isn't it? Hey, by the way, I've got a book on the website. I did it one time in a newsletter. Brother Steve and them had it professionally done and bound. A book called the Ruach. The Holy Spirit. See it? The Ruach. That is up on the website. And, you know, the one thing that, that can um, possibly help a lot of people, and it's really written well. I'm not saying that just because I wrote it. But the book is $9.99. It's about 20 pages long. It's the best ministry tool that you can use in the world to give somebody the comprehension and the understanding of the Holy Spirit, professionally bound to. If you go there on the website, it'll connect you to it. You can buy a few of them, hand it out for uh, uh, witnesses, or leave them in places and let people hopefully come to Yahshua. Is also at thebookpatch.com. Thebookpatch.com. Of course, you go there, you type in Pastor Dow. Well, Holy Spirit should bring it right to it. That's what people need in an hour. Oh, no matter, by the way, the people in Green Bay don't even have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But they believe that they are the disciples of Christ. I can go on and on. 
sad situation. Religious spirits. Man, hold on for a second. Brother Josh, his family, Sister Candace, and the boys, they're here visiting along with Brother Christian from Straightway East in Kentucky. And uh, it's always a joy seeing them every single time it is. Um, the feast day of unleavened bread is coming up. I hope you've called and put in get your um, place for the feast. And um, you got your tent and sweeping bag. Now, let me tell you, it's been cold here. And um, my recommendation is you get a tent. Don't wait till you come here at Straightway and try to go to the Walmart and buy a cot. Because chances are it's going to be gone. Buy a cot in your prospective areas. And a couple of people were setting up tents for those who are coming overseas. We're going to have them squared away. Y'all hold on for a second. Man. A bunch of smoke or something, whatever it is. I'm going to have to find a hard time. can't breathe back here. Hold on for a second. I'll be right back. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High right. God. Our mailing address for your offerings or letters of support is Charles Dowell. All right. So I would suggest that you bring a tent, cot, sleeping bag, maybe a wool blanket. Wool blanket keep you warm and some warm socks for your feet. We'll have coffee, tea, hot condiments in the morning for you to get one with. Hopefully it don't rain a lot. Either way it goes, makes no difference. We're Israelites. Ain't that's, that's what our ancient people did. Can y'all imagine us trying to live like our ancient people today? Are we not a bunch of spoiled brats? Pathetic? Are we not soft candy people? I'm talking about as a whole. Now I know some of you out there, man, y'all hardcore. But some of you, y'all candy. Uh, but anyway... Let me see what else. Oh, yeah. Uh, at the store, with Sister Carol's products. Man, she does them things every day. Every day. Oh, yeah, by the way, that business that we tried to get down at the hospital, uh, Brother Jamil's wife was making a presentation, and you know what happened? A white nurse stole Sister Carol's idea, made up a lesser quality of stuff, and now it's selling it in the hospital in a maternity ward. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Dang. Boy, I got my own thoughts on that stuff. Nowhere near the quality what Sister Carol's is. It's utterly unbelievable. Um... But there will not be a physical store for Carol products at the feast. But you can get products while at the feast. And pre-orders will ensure that your products are available. You get that? You need to email info at care, C-A-R-E, that's info at C-A-R-E hyphen E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. 
And that means some of you as dash, a middle dash. Dot com. Again, let me get this. If you go ahead and you plan on coming to the feast, you want to save a lot in these exorbitant amount of shipping fees that go on nowadays. It would behoove you to go ahead and do a pre-order now. You can take your products back with you. You don't have to pay all that high shipping. Don't make no sense how, how high this shipping is nowadays. We're doing pretty good here straightway. Get his call-in number. Uh, I guess it's still the same. I don't see it up there. Well, let me see if I can find the guest calling them. There it is. 310-982-4226. That's the old, old number. Bring your cameras. We want to lock quite a few pictures. We're going to be doing foot washing. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Jermaine. Shabbat Shalom, Mother Beasley. Um, sister, now Sister Rachel in Alaska is um, in labor. And she's getting ready to, to deliver an Israelite. Getting to the point now that we can't even go. You know what I mean? Nowhere near these hospitals. They're just trying to shoot her up with epidurals and everything else. And, and, and they wasn't having it. They just simply was not going to have it. Can you blame them? Also, if you're not a patron, probably behoove you to go over there. And join up because I've been changing my standard operating procedure. I have actually, it looks like I'm doing a lot of you videos on YouTube, and I am. There's still an audience that comes from YouTube that comes to the ministry. But I'm starting to make the switch big time for real, putting the majority of the content that's very valuable, at least what I consider to be valuable, over on Patreon. Hallelujah. I want all of you to be prayed up. And we got some people that's been on a fast for a week. Some of us are going to still be fasting. Passover is always a wonderful, wonderful time. Don't forget to stay connected to the ministry. You know, when I say stay connected to the ministry, first and foremost, what I mean is to develop and, and a strong relationship with the Most High. Some of you, you don't know how to have a relationship with the Most High because you ain't, on even, you ain't never had one with Him. You have never had an intimate relationship. The most your relationship has ever been with the Most High is mental ascent. It hasn't been one of obedience. And you know what's amazing to me? I don't never let people question me who have never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit who have never cast out devils, who have never healed the sick, who don't live set apart, they don't keep the commandments. I don't let too many people question me when it comes to doctrine. You can't get those basic tenets. There's a lot of things you're missing out on. I had some people say that our sisters was mindless and dumb, and, and I said, I wish, I truly wish I could get all those coward, Jezebelic sister, or women who said that to actually sit across from the table in an open form against our sisters, I will put our sisters up against any women, and including your wives, out there in the world. In reference to their, number one, their love for the Father, which is shown in obedience. Number two, their dedication to their homes, their husbands, the ministry, their children, and the intelligence level that they have to have the intestinal fortitude in their heart. To, to serve Yahshua in the midst of his wicked and perverse generation without making any excuses whatsoever. I'll put any of our sisters up against any of those so-called sisters or women out there. Put them up against all of them. And if Paula White and George Miles are your champions, I'll put them up against them too. Our sisters, sisters broadcast and the ones who come on there, man, they'll run circles around them. See, when you come the straight way, the game is over. The playing religion 
falsifying your belief that you really love Christ and you can't even really truly meet his conditions by being obedient, all that, that that's game over when you come over here. Because you, you can't hide your hypocrisy. You can't hide your lies. Not here you can't. Because this is the place where serious-minded people meet and are very serious about the kingdom and our yacht. All right, all right, all right. Hey, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the phone lines. Not going to be before you long, hopefully. Guest calling number 310-982-4226. You want to talk to Pastor Dow, you press number one. Get in the caller queue. I'll be glad to take your phone call. Let's go to Texas. Brother Marcus. Call number 682. 682. And by the way, what I normally do is call out your area code. When you hear your area code, chances are it's probably you. 682, 682, Brother Marcus is Pastor Dow. You on the Straight With You radio broadcast. I can help you. Pastor Dow, how you doing? Shabbat Shalom. Bless you. Bless you, brother. Doing all right. Um, I wanted to I wanted to talk to you today because um last blog talk you had um expedited my process with um getting me in contact with Elder Mitchell and uh today was the Shabbat I was supposed to go down there, me and Brother Sanders and fellowship with um uh, Straightway in Houston. And as soon as I woke up this morning I started having problems with my car and I spent all day and the the money to try to get it fixed and at the end of the day, I, I still couldn't make it out there, and I felt so bad to have to relay that message to them that I wasn't going to be able to come. But I knew it was just the, the enemy working. I've never had a problem with my car until today, the day I was supposed to leave. So I don't know. I've been a little down because I really wanted to go. But um, I know maybe maybe I'll be able to go next Shabbat and fellowship with my brethren in Christ. Oh, maybe you will. It's, it's nothing but the devil. What you do, my brother, you know, you know, uh, you need to pray, right? You know, on a week in advance, start binding that devil and making sure that there be no mechanical issues, troubles or problems, no health issues, stuff like that. Because, you know, the devil is going to work now. Mm -hmm. So just try to plan to get down there the yeah. next following week then. Okay, I will. I'll make sure I do that and and uh, also, uh, I also had uh, another another question about uh, the um, apparel of Straightway. I know that uh, I had my wife had seen something on the uh, Straightway Help Meets, I think it is, and they had done a video about all the T-shirts and everything. And I just want to uh, make sure of which PO box that I sent it to because I had seen one on a video on YouTube and I've seen another one um, that's more recent. So I just want to know is both of them still in effect or is only one still in effect? Just one. P.O. Box 32. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. L-A-F-A-Y E-T-T-E -T -T -E, Tennessee 37083. Send it to Charles Dow Jr. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, thanks, Pastor. Uh, I don't really have anything else. Shabbat Shalom. Bless you. Be at peace. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, the devil's going to fight you. When it comes time to get the fellowship, he's going to fight you. Let's go to Kentucky. Call number 270 is Pastor Dow. We're going to serve you two radio broadcasts. I can help you there in Kentucky. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. It's Brother Ron. How are you? Hey, Brother Ron. Man, you know what? I tried to text you today, and I can show it to you right on my phone. Yes, sir. My text wouldn't even go out today at all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, when you got time, Pastor, any time is good whenever you have free time, sir. All right. How's the baby? Baby's doing great. Baby is doing great. A lot of eating and pooping and sleeping right now. That's basically about it. Yep. How's the but, wife? Um, is it? She's doing good, too. She's doing good, moving around a little bit, uh, recovering good. Yep. So, um, and how's the dad? I'm joyful. I'm truly joyful. 
Daddy's great. Daddy's great. Daddy's happy. I got uh, y'all's added strength to me. I'm I'm joyful over here. I thank the Father for it. Have a mercy and opening up her womb and letting her be able to have a child, Pastor. It just, Ooh. oh, man, it's beautiful. Well, I tell you, man, little babies yeah. change everything, don't they? Yes, sir. Yes, they do. Be a whole <laughs> new outlook on life, right. don't they? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is true. Got to get ready to... Uh, Got to get ready for the little man, make sure everything is set up for him. So that's going to require more out of me. Too much is given, much is expected. And this baby is going to need uh, gonna need everything that it needs in Israel. So, yes, sir. So what I do want to uh, say, Pastor, is I want to call in and I wanted to thank, uh, first and foremost, the Most High Yah for um, blessing me with a child and uh, opening up the womb of my wife and forming the baby and everything and uh, giving me a healthy baby and bringing the child into this earth. And I want to thank Straightway for all the help that they have given them from uh, before the labor to after the, to before the labor, during the labor, and after the labor. Uh, they have abundantly assisted in the labor of my wife uh, in this household and, and helping the baby even after the labor took place. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of people to name, uh, Sister Ashley, Sister Ajali, Sister Lisa, uh, Mother Carol, uh, it just goes on and on. All the sisters around the land that came and helped out and saints not even around the land but abroad that sent in gifts and, and just it's just abundant throughout Israel. And I just want to make it known to all of you, we truly and wholeheartedly appreciate all that you have done for us. And uh, to each and every man out there in Israel, Yah bless your house abundantly and uh, give you the de desires of your heart and multiply Israel the more so we thank all of you uh for coming and helping every saint every sister on the land the straight way uh pastor i thank you for coming by pastor I, I i just thank you all it truly does show that we are a family and um i really can't say nothing more than that besides it really does truly show we're a tribe and a family oh yeah uh we thank herbs of the field and herbally defined for the tinctures that they gave uh for for the birth and that helped out after the birth uh so we thank the sisters that put their hands to the plow and and really uh develop those things for for birth and we truly appreciate all of that and we thank you for all the prayers and the fastings that went forth too as well so i'm not going to hold up time pastor and i thank tamika as well the house of brother delano for all the assistance as well and each and every saint that helped you know your names but pastor i don't want to hold up and and be long but Yah is good, and I thank you, Pastor, for being our, our pastor and guiding us back to the old paths as you follow Christ. Thank you. Well, glory to the King. Bless you, son. Bless you, Father. Shabbat 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 yeah, I got another grandbaby. I give him a lot of them things now. A lot of them. I love the children. Boy, you should have seen little yourself in practice down here today. Boy, we could have video camera on that little boy. That little boy is something else. Anyway, Jesus. Yeah, and Brother Ron had that baby at home. Sure did. Beautiful, beautiful, strong young man. Sister Tamar, trooper. Man, she a trooper, boy. Just just, just a beautiful Israelite sister. Got it done. Hallelujah. Let's go to Jean. Call number 612-612 there in Minnesota. Brother Gene, it's Pastor Dowie on the Straight With Choose Radio broadcast. I can help you, Gene. Well, long-time listener, second-time caller. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so, man, I'll tell you, you know how to stir it up, brother, because, um, so, would you like an interesting story about the Sabbath? Let's hear it. So, I had my mom up for about a week. <laughs> Okay. And we start talking. We start talking about the Sabbath, and uh, one of my wives, uh, who used to be in the uh, Joe Witness group, um, talking to her about the Sabbath. And I'll tell you, nine day difference between the two people. My uh, my mom's like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't really defend against the Sabbath. And then she goes, so I said, so what are you gonna do about it? She goes, I'm gonna keep the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Um. What was interesting is one of my wives was like, um, I told her that, and, and keep in mind, this is probably out of fear. So 
so you know she, she's not a bad woman by any means. I got you. But she basically told me if if I chose to be an Israelite, live on the land, and you know live like an Israelite, uh, I could do it by myself. <laughs> and uh, she's like, I don't want don't want to be part of another false religion. I said that's fine. I says you only got to do one thing. And I said. All you got to do is prove the Sabbath doesn't need to be kept. And so we are, I said, if you can prove that, then I'm going to tell Pastor Dow, you know, have a nice day and all that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's a spiritual fight, brother. It really is. Yeah. And had some really, had some really good news. One of my wives is now uh, covering. She's keeping the Sabbath. She's not eating pork. So... So my my family's turning around, brother. So I do have a question. May I ask, and then I'll hang then I'll hang up and uh, listen on air. Sure. What are the ten things that you believe that the difference between Christian community and Israelite community, the attitudes, the actions? Because it's my my contention that Israelites are a community, Christians are a part of a membership. And I'll hang up with that, um, and I'll, let, I'll listen in. All right. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, my wife had a question. Sorry. All right. Oh, well, she was wondering when she's supposed to cover, when she, does she have to cover when she's sleeping, and only when she prays, that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll, let, we'll let you listen. I'll listen on air. All right. Bless you. Bless your brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Well, first of all, when you're in the confines of your house, you don't have to cover. You're in your home. You're in your husband's house. Uh, you're in your bedroom. Nobody cares what you wear. Oh, don't wear it. I mean, it's you and your husband, after all. Um, you're in your domain. However, if someone comes over visiting, that's when you want to cover your hair. Um, you know, or if you go outside of the door, you want to cover your glory because it's a sign of submission that you're under the authority of your husband. It really ain't that hard. And I want to address a statement right here. You know, people always say, I don't want to join or be a part of, the, of a cult. Well, first of all, the cult that many people have been involved in, all of them went into it because they were dumb, stupid, and ignorant. They didn't do any investigation. They did not study the scripture. They just joined something blindly, and they didn't even take the responsibility of their own self of being deceived because the cult didn't deceive you. You deceived yourself. Everybody needs to hear that. You deceived yourself. It's amazing because when people come to straightway for the first time in their life, they really truly become students of the Bible, and they start doing their due diligence and start doing their investigation, which they should have done before they uh, joined the cult. Now, we have a different culture than the majority of the people out there in the world because the difference between the community and Christianity or the, uh, an Israelite community and those who claim to be Israelites and uh, not community-minded is just simply obedience to the word. Did not Jesus say, unless a man forsake all that he has, he cannot be my disciple? Name me how many people has ever done that before in this life. I mean, literally, physically done it. In this generation, straightway, and everyone that lives on the communities of straightway have all done it. And mind you, we have seven, eight communities where people have done this. And three in Kentucky, one in Kansas, uh, one in Tennessee, two in Georgia, one in South Carolina. So, you know, before a lot of people go around hollering and screaming cult, what is a cult defined by the people who are more obedient to the word and more serious-minded to the word than those that are in the world or those who are just religious? The Most people that I hear use the term cult are the least dedicated people that I've ever met in my life. They have sacrificed nothing. They have given up nothing. And they're not striving for anything. They're just living and existing in life. In this life right here as a true Israelite, this is all about sacrifice. It's not about being selfish, self-focused, self-centered, self-absorbed. This is totally an unselfish life where you put others before yourself. So how many people have obeyed Jesus 
when he says, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Well, so that's a strike against people who say that they're disciples, a disciple someone who follows Christ and obey him. And that's a strike against all these stage playing people out there who with their abstract mindset are claiming with their lips that they serve Yah. Yeah, you do, but in works you deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. Also, there is not another set of sisters in the whole entire world more dedicated to serving the Father than our sisters here straightway. And I will put them up against any group of women in the entire world. That is a fact. I haven't seen any that is more holy, more set apart, more sanctified, more justified, more dedicated. I haven't seen no women or group of women anywhere remotely close to them when it comes to knowing the scripture. Not a philosophy, knowing exactly what the Bible has to say, live it and do it. I haven't seen no sisters anywhere that submits to their husbands and love their children and obeys their husband. Bar none, anywhere in the world, and I have been a lot of places. I haven't been everywhere, but I have never seen nobody like this group at all. I have never, ever seen such an unselfish people that I had an opportunity to live with and love unconditionally in this life that do for each other. I'm already well past 10 already. I haven't seen it. And if you find someone out there that is that way, show us that. I like to test that boast. I really would. I would love for you to find me a group of women that is more biblically sound, more biblically knowledgeable, more set apart and holy and sanctified, more dedicated to Jesus than, than, than the sisters that I know it straightway. I don't know any. And I test people. I try these spirits. I don't know any at all. And if you can find some, I want you to show them to me. Because if there's someone that is more dedicated, that is more obedient to Yah and their husbands than our sisters, I'll show you the type of spirit they got. They will stop what they're doing and they will listen and learn and improve on their love for y'all and their husbands and be even better than what they are now. How many of you people got that attitude? How many people you have that type of character? How many people uh, made that kind of sacrifice? Another thing is we obey the word. We keep the commandments. We follow the feast days. We get baptized in his name and we're filled with the Holy Spirit we cast out devils, and we heal. I mean, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on and on, and our women look like women, and our men look like men. That is the truth. We homeschool our children. We birth our children at home. That's what we do. When we get sick, we very rarely, rarely ever run to the hospital. I can count. On one hand, how many times that we have been to the hospital in the last 20 years? Did y'all hear what I said? One hand, 20 years. I'm talking about literally been. Who else can say that in the ministry? Yah has got to be with us because he did say in Exodus 15, 26, if you would diligently obey me, hearken unto my voice, and do that which is right in my sight, I will not lay any of these diseases upon you as I have laid upon the Egyptians because I am Yahweh, your Elohim, that healeth thee. I mean, right now, just by what I've just got finished saying, everybody else pales in comparison to our dedication. And we say this with all humility because Yah being gracious towards us has allowed us with his Ruach, the ability to love him to the zenith and obey him. And for this, we thank Yah for it. We do. We have the real genuine Holy Spirit that genders to obedience. Our homes are not wrecked. They're not. They're not. They're beautiful homes. Something to be envied. Something to be desired. So I think I pretty much gave a pretty good resume. And we realized that first of all, even amongst our, only amongst ourselves, we don't do that. But there ain't nobody else out there more dedicated than what I've seen with the people in this ministry. 
I ain't seen no brothers nowhere near on the level of our brothers. Nowhere. I haven't even met a group of elders that is more biblically sound and informed and more serious, more dedicated, more holy, more righteous, more set apart than the group at Straightway. And people that are in the ministry of Straightway. These are some serious-minded people that will make it to the kingdom. They have been justified by the blood of Jesus. Our obedience is what leads us to sanctification, being set apart. We show by the fruit of the Spirit that we do have the genuine Holy Spirit because by that fruit you should know them. You can't deny it. Got an international phone call. International phone call. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Serve Your Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shalom, Pastor Dow. This is Shamar Caston. Can you hear me? Shamar Caston, how are you doing? Yes, sir, I can hear you loud and clear. Um, this is my first time actually calling and talking to you because I, I have two questions for you. Um, I'm actually in the military right now. I'm right. 21 years old. I'm in South Korea right now. Okay. You over at the DMZ? Yes, sir. Um, close to it, yes, sir. Okay, well, go ahead. So I'm I'm actually done with my tour here though I'm leaving next week, and um I listen I've been listening to your videos like for the past year now. Really? And I actually listen pretty well. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So um yeah um I joined the military right almost right out of high school and I my parents had like they didn't tell me anything, and then I listened to your videos and I just I really want to know like how could I um. I guess start preparing as far as physically and spiritually because I also I, heard, I remember you saying you can't serve two masters and then as you can imagine because you've been in the military it's kind of like difficult to you know stay away from all the sin and everything yes sir well the one thing you can do first of all number one is stay connected Always stay connected, network. You got Skype. You got all different type of things that you can do to reach out uh, to speak to other fellow Israelites. And always stay connected by listening, watching. Do you ever watch Shabbat services whenever you get the opportunity? Yes, sir. I watch them every Shabbat. Okay. Do that and then yes, do not ever forsake your dedication with the Most High Yah with morning devotion and stuff, always read your Bible, pray, fast, study your words, stay connected with him. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And then what you do is is to prepare yourself as far as transitioning and stuff, it's easy. You've been in, you came out, you're just going to come out a little bit more disciplined, with more serious minded. But wherever you're planning on um, residing at, get some people to do some footwork and groundwork for you and, and look at the job situation to see what you can possibly end up doing while you're working on perfecting holiness in the sight of the Most High Yah. You know that making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you read my Ruach um, Holy Spirit book? No, sir, I have not. Um, I could I could find that through um, e-books, correct? Yeah, but if you go online at straightway.com, you know the website, right? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah, go over and look at them. Where, uh, read those newsletters. Man, they are a wealth of knowledge that will save you years, my brother. They surely will. But the best thing I can do is tell you to stay connected, man. Stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to his people because that's where you get your strength from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. And also, I had a, another question for you. Um, I'm actually coming home to Texas here in like a couple days. Okay. And I know Passover's coming up soon. Yep. How how would you go about keeping that? Because my family, they're all Christians. They don't. They they don't. I've never even heard of Passover until I listened to you and started reading the Bible for myself. When you get over here in the United States or back to the states, we're going to be broadcasting our. Uh, Passover, Unleavened Bread Passover services live. All you got, we'll, we will go in great detail so you'll know exactly what we're doing. All you got to do is be right there with us on the other side of that camera doing what we're doing. And make sure you get you some, try to go to a store somewhere and try to find a place that has some unleavened bread. Uh, if you don't know, try to get, just make it a little bit or get someone to make it. There's got to be somebody close around. There's got to be a Jewish store 
uh, that that somewhere in Texas that you can buy some unleavened bread. They did get you some um, kosher wine, like some Manischewitz, um, and we'll be taking of the body and the blood of Christ. He's our sacrifice, and we'll be going through the Passover ritual or the ceremony. Okay. Yes, sir. And if you ain't got nobody there to wash yes, your feet. Get some, uh, get your bucket of water and a towel and wash your own feet and and just thank y'all for being able to have a mind and conscience for doing it. Yes, sir. So you'll be able to watch and see everything, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. It's been an honor speaking with you. Is there anything else, my brother? Um, no, sir. Just hopefully one day when I start growing in grace and knowledge, maybe I can meet you one day. What are what are you right now? E four. I'm an E three. I'm I'm only twenty one years old. Yeah, so you got a few years left to go then. Yes, sir. Okay, that's all right. I was a private once before too. <laughs> yes, sir. Stay connected when you get back over in the states, okay? Because you know America is wicked. Yes, sir. Do you know where your next duty station is going to be? Yes, sir. I'm actually going to Germany next. You know, wait a minute. You're leaving Korea and then going to Germany? Yes, sir. Where are you going? What's your MOS? I'm a vehicle operator. I'm in. I'm actually in the Air Force. So. Oh, okay. That's the difference. All right. All right, Ben, brother. Stay connected, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. All right, because we got a, a little family that's going to be here that, that lives in Germany. You, you may end up being close to them where you could fellowship with them on the Sabbath. Brother Freddie and Brother Dennis. I have to get, I'll have to get in touch with them. I'll have to get in touch with them. Yes, sir. Because they'll probably... Yes, sir. All right, my brother. Bless there, you. Um, bless you, Pastor. Have a good one. Do you have anything else? No, sir, I don't want to waste it. I don't want to take any more. You're not wasting time. You're on an international call. You got something else, brother, to spit it out. Um, no, sir, that, that's everything. I just, I just want to say thank you for everything you do for us, even for the people that you don't even know. Like, you, you really make an impact. Well, thank you, my brother. Spread the word, okay? Just give people the website. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Get a couple of those yes, e-books, sir. man, and then pass them out. Do whatever you can. Bless you, my brother. It's been an honor speaking with you. Yes, sir. It's been an honor for you, too, Pastor L. Thank you. All right. Shabbat shalom, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Hey, uh, brother Kabir, we're not evangelizing. That's in South Korea. Check that out, huh? All right, all right, all right. All right, let's go to... Um, oh, by the way, y'all notice how respectful the soldiers are on active duty as opposed to some of you uncouth, undisciplined people? Go to Michigan. Brother Juan, Michigan, Brother Juan. It's Pastor Dowie from Street Two Radio Broadcast. How can I help you there, Brother Juan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing, Pastor? I am blessed. Good, good, good to hear, good to hear. I just wanted to give you a quick update um, from our previous conversation that we had a few days ago, Pastor. Shoot. Okay, um, basically, I got everything pretty much set up uh, for the date that we uh, talked about. Um, as far as the conference room and, you know, the hotel and everything is pretty much set up. And, um, you know, I just want to let you know I got uh, about 30 people that's already that um, has uh, said that they were going to be coming. Um, so everything is going into the right direction. All right. So if you got the hotel information and everything, put out the information now so people can go ahead and get a jump on it. Okay. I got to, you know, get in the house. I'm sitting in my car right now. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I'll tell you what you do. You know, I'll make a YouTube video about it. Just send me the information or let one of the sisters in the dining hall take it down. Call the dining hall. Give them information. And we'll go from there, and I'll put out a little bit here. Uh, what, what city is it in? Oh, uh, It's going to be in Troy, Troy, Michigan. Troy, Michigan. Yes, sir. All right. 
All right, my and bro. The, and the date was uh, April 14th. And I, I just need to know, Pastor, uh, where you going to be standing one or two days? Um, well, I'm going to be there probably Friday. Uh, and I'm going to be there Shabbat Saturday. You know, be able to spend some time. Then I'll leave out okay. first day. I'll leave out first day that Sunday morning. Okay, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, that's why I needed to know. It sounds good. We're looking forward to uh, seeing you and um, and um, having a, a good meeting. All right, my brother. Thank you. Bless okay, you. Okay, Pastor, I'll talk to you. No, thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you. Shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. What Brother Juan is talking about is that <clears throat> I'm going to be in Troy, Michigan, April the 14th. 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. <clears throat> Troy, Michigan, April 14th. That's on the Shabbat. Um, I'm going to be there doing a meeting that Sabbath. And when I get more information, he calls in. I will make a video and put it out in plenty of time so that if you want to come, be you, you, and you there. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you brother Juan. Let's go to Brother Rick. Call number 727-727. It's Pastor Dow. We're going to with you radio broadcast. How can I help you that, Brother Rat? Hey, Sebastian. Sebastian. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to know if I'm in the right frame of mindset. Um, did you ever pray a prayer to, to Yah to ask him, to raise up men of skill, like skillful men? I asked for the Father to send us men. I didn't ask him to send us skillful men, but then I turned around and rephrased that because when he sent us some men, he sent us some men, but boy, they wasn't men. I, I wasn't specific, if you know what I mean, but what are you getting to? Well, I just, I had a dream a couple of uh, weeks ago. Um, can I tell it to you? Um, you can tell the Elder Mitchell. All right. And then the Elder Mitchell will tell me, tell it. You tell it the Elder down there. Yes, sir. Um, another question. Uh, can you guys change uh, my name from Rit to not for Rit because it's just a spirit I'm dealing with? But um, I'd rather just have my first name because, you know, that's, that's the name that was given to me. All right, uh, well. For, for the blog talk name. Okay, what is it? It's, uh, it's N-A-P-H-A-R-I-T-H. Pronounce it. That's it. Not for it. Not for it, all right? All right, bless you, my yes. brother. That's it, sir. Bless you. Bless about you. Home. Let's go to Georgia. 478, 478, Pastor Dow, we're going to serve you the radio broadcast. I can help you there in Georgia. Hello? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, man, it's good to talk to you, Pastor Dow. This is Brother Lucas Carter. Yes, sir. Bless you, Brother Luke. Um, bless you, Brother. Um, bless you, bless you, Brother. Brother Pastor Dow. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I've been listening, and I heard the uh, uh, first caller call in, um, and uh, I'd just like to say something to him and the other Israelites abroad, if you don't mind, just say a few quick words. Is that okay? Sure, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, brother who called in said that um, the devil's been attacking him about coming in. I want to say to you, brother, and any other Israelites who are planning on coming to Passover, and be ready for a war against the house of time. Because when it comes to Pastor Dow, he is, he, this man is, is an anointed man of Yah. And, 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 and he, the devil has been knocked off his feet. By Pastor Dow, by, by the precious blood of Jesus and the blessing, the anointing of Yah. And and, and and when you start to follow Pastor Dow, the devil is just seeing the army, the holy army, building up. But just be ready for a war. I know myself, 
that I, I have had to deal with blows from the devil left and right, left and right. I ain't even going to go through them, but don't be discouraged, brother. Be encouraged. And any other Israelites who, 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 who are planning on coming and are seeing things to try to trip them up in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, I declare that you will make it if it be Yah's will. And if you don't make it, be encouraged. Because we are all under one spirit. And, and it's going to be okay. And, and in y'all's timing, we will all be together. Hallelujah. That, that's all I wanted to say about that, Pastor Dow. But I, I wanted to call and ask you something that, that, that's uh, kind of been on my mind a little lately. I noticed a couple weeks ago that they said that uh, it was on the, the media that they uncovered uh, some kind of a seal of Isaiah in uh, Jerusalem or in between the city of David, and 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 I saw a picture of it, and and I haven't heard you know many people talk about it. All I saw was that they uncovered it, and they showed a picture of it. And I kind of want to ask you like two questions combined into one. But is is would, first of all, would we know if like the first seal in Re Revelation was broken? Would we know like at that time that oh this first seal has been broken? Or would it just kind of happen and we wouldn't know? Or, or, or is there a way of knowing that? And then secondly, um, do you think that, that that has anything to do with the seal in Revelation? Well, first of all, surely Yahweh Elohim would do nothing until he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. In other words, before Yah does anything, his chosen people, we, us, Israel, we will know. He always informs us before things happen. Are you following me? Yes, sir. And, and believe me, we'll be able to declare it. We'll know. So don't worry about that right now. Um, whether it's part of the seal or not, no. Y'all haven't told us to us yet. Okay. Okay, Pastor. That's basically, I want to hear it from you because I, I was thinking maybe you might make a video about it or something, but you didn't, and that's why I called you and asked you. I ain't even I, seen the thing. I ain't even know the thing was out there. Yes, sir. I just googled. Uh, just googled like a uh, seal of Isaiah uh, found in Jerusalem, and it popped up like all up and down, like two or three pages of stuff on oh. it. But yes, sir. <clears throat> all right, my brother. Well, that's all, Pastor Doc. Bless you, Pastor Doc. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Blake. 512, Texas. It's Pastor Dow. You want to serve two radio broadcasts? I can help you. Hey, Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Um, I'm not going to uh, hold you up, Pastor. I just, uh, I just have been convicted about some things and I just, I just got to do this. I got to get this right. So, um, first, yeah, I want to apologize to you. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not going to make any excuses. I, I, you know, I just, I've been doing my own thing faster and, you know, I've been, you know, that, that last message, uh, the message before last, you preached, you know, I, I, it was it was to me, and uh, you were speaking directly to me, and um, you know, I've been getting torn up, Pastor, and uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just ready, uh, just ready to stop, ready to stop the madness, ready to, to just ready to submit, and. And I just want to apologize, you know, to my elder down there in uh, Houston. Um, I also want to apologize to the saints. Um, I, I've affected a lot of lives, and uh, I just want to make things right. Just get right, you know, with my brothers and my sisters and you and my elder, because, you know, they, they are family. The things that they did, you know, at, way more than my natural family has ever done in my entire life. So, you know, I just wanted to, just to get that, 
get that off my heart, that off my chest, because I've been suffering. And I won't keep suffering if I didn't, you know, repent. And um, that's all I want to say, Pastor. All right, you get over there with Elder, Elder Mitch and, and Brother Greg and let them discern you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've been uh, we've been speaking a lot, and you know, just I just I just I'm just ready to be back with my family. Okay, brother. Okay. All right, bless you. Bless you, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Michigan. Call number 616-616. Pastor Dow, in the Strictly Truth Radio broadcast. I can help you in Michigan. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. How's it going? Shabbat Shalom. Doing well. Who am I speaking with? This is uh, Brother Ryan McClain. Ryan McClain. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm doing well, uh, Pastor. I was just trying to call in, and I had a question. Also, I wanted to tell you how y'all just been blessing me and how good he's been to me okay and um um i'm a a contractor by trade um so i do a lot of a lot of work a lot of groundwork and i own my own business but um you know i I had some work going with carmax you know at the dealership right had some work going with them for a while um and the company was projected to make over 200 200 thousand dollars for that year but you know carmax was not allowing me to keep the keep the sabbath you know, and this is when I first started to come into the faith and listening to you. And, you know, once I really got serious about it and serious-minded about it, and I started keeping the Sabbath, and I guess they weren't too happy about it, I dropped them. And not too long after, Home Depot actually came up and, and presented offers for me to where I could actually arrange my schedule for myself and for people that work for me to where we keep the Sabbath, we get out early on Fridays before sundown, and we can be able to stay, you know, Stay off. We were off on Saturday. We don't no work on Saturday. So um, I was just, you know, glory to the king for that. Um, also, uh, I wanted to ask you if, you know, I didn't know if you were going to be doing some baptism uh, during the Passover because I'd love to get baptized if you if you had some time or if you were planning on doing some baptisms. Yeah, we always have a baptism uh, during um, Passover. We always do. We usually baptize that Shabbat. So, yeah, come on down. Man, it would be an honor. It would be an honor if that definitely worked out. I mean, um, I guess the day, because I was supposed to be uh, coming on the 28th, sir. So uh, on the 28th, I didn't know if you were, if that was around the time. So I just wanted to make sure that I asked you and see if that's cool, if I can just slide in there real quick. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, go Come on down. I'm going to put out a video. You know, go look at some previous videos. Uh, that we did a few years, you know, last year about what to bring and what to expect. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah, they up there now. Okay. Looking, looking, All right. looking forward to seeing you. Glad that uh, Most High moved in in your favor there, brother, and you got the Shabbat off. The glory to the King. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I do want to say Shabbat Shalom and bless you, Pastor. And I'm not going to hold you for too much longer, and I'll call next Next Friday, I'll call into the dining hall if I got any uh, any other questions or whatnot. But that's all I have for today. So, <laughs> all right, my brother, bless you. Yeah, all right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. My, <clears throat> send me a message here. Okay, listen. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this question. I hope y'all listening. Um, there are many ways. The reason why I don't speak much about tithes and offerings. It's because I figured you're probably more well-versed than I am when you come from Christianity. As much as they talk about tithes and offering, you're more educated about it than I am. I figure I don't have to really say much about it because if there's one doctrine Christianity talks about, that's tithes and offering. But, however, if you want to see, and I do, I see every offering that comes in. I do appreciate it. I really truly do. I love, it, it speaks for the great love that you have. For the Most High Yah, first and foremost, and me as your pastor, it's an honor. Um, but if you want to give, I, my preferred method is if you send the P.O. Box 32 and you send it like in a two, three day envelope or an overnight envelope, if you're going to send a large amount, a large amount is anything over $500, send it in cash. 
sent it by carrier, you know what I mean, FedEx or UPS or, or USPS. Um, you know, you could take a portion out of that and just pay for the shipping. Um, I, that's what I prefer more than anything. Um, I also have a PayPal account. And the PayPal is my last name, Dowell. Dowell7000 at gmail.com. That's the PayPal account. Dowell, D-O-W-E-L-L, 7000 at gmail.com. If you want to give that way, you can give that way. Again, I, first, I prefer cash. But if, it, if you can't get it, you can get that way, go that way. Um, you can cash money order, post a money order, or money ground. That'll work. That'll do. Um if you can send it that way as well, that'll be that'll be just fine. Post the money order on money ground or even a personal check, that'll work. If you want to send it, when you come to Passover, and of course you send it to P.O. Box 32, or if you have a home address, you've been here, you can send it there. But if you're coming to Passover, now I had somebody just ask me, how do we give you offers at Passover? Well, just walk right up to me and say, bless your pastor and give them to me. That's how you do it. <laughs> um and of course, if you see, um, 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 if I'm really, really busy, um, and, and you see, of course, I really am, um, we'll talk about all that later and stuff, but you really just walk right up to me, just give it to me, okay? Um, glory to the king. Um, so again, I don't talk about it too much because I figured you already know better than I do what it is. Glory to the king. I am still working on, because I've had the brothers uh, last year uh, set me up two vacation days uh, or weeks, um, and, and I do appreciate it. I still have the offerings and everything, and I am going to use them as soon as I get my head above water. Glory to the king. All right, so we're in the process right now. We're still looking for land for Mother Muncie to build a home up here. For Mother Monty and, and a couple other sisters that she's going to have over there with her, we're going to custom build his home, which, guess what? We can do. That's just straightway. We can do it. Hey, don't, 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 don't. This is how we do it now. Don't, 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 don't. This is how we do it. Hey, hey. got to get that in there. Lord to the king. And y'all good. All right. Let's go to uh, where we at? Oh, man. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I've been to Brother Ron. Let's go to Indiana. Call number 317-317. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Strip Choose Radio Broadcast. I can help you. They're in Indiana. Keep on, keep on running. Bless you, Pastor Dow. Bless Shabbat you. Shalom, Mrs. Brother Daniel from Indianapolis. Bless you, Brother Daniel. Bless you. You love that song, don't you? Yes, sir. I keep singing it because uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, since I left Green Bay, Wisconsin, I lost my voice a little bit this week training these guys, but uh, since I left uh, Wisconsin, me and Brother Brandon and Brother Samuel and Sister Ashley, they've been coming to our house. Glory. Every single Shabbat. And me and Brother Brandon and Brother Samuel, we sing it every single week together as we hugging each other and fellowshipping together. So that's my song. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Brother, Pastor, I just wanted to call in today and and, and, and say, bless you, brothers. Bless, bless, bless everything that's going on. This is, I've never seen nothing like this, to be honest with you. Um, it's real, ain't it, brother? Brother Samuel, let me say this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother brother Samuel, first of all, the man is a walking Bible. <laughs> I mean, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of brothers in straight way, but brother Samuel is tight. Yes, he is. I mean, I, I've, I mean, I, I, I was actually. A, let me say this: I was actually a Christian who read my Bible. I, I did read. Um, 
but being around Brother Samuel and Brother Brandon and the family and their families has been such a blessing these last couple of weeks. Um, it's, it's just it's just been amazing. It's just been amazing, you know, what's going on. And we're so happy to come down there, so happy to come down there for Passover. We're excited. Me and my wife get up every morning talking about it. I learned from some of the brothers on our, uh, our little Marco Polo that they've been, you know, instructing us and telling us what to bring and, you know, making sure we're prepared. Everybody's just looking out for each other. This is it's truly a family. Now this it's is your truly a family. This is your first time coming down, so we have uh we're gonna put you and your family up in our guest room. Okay? Hey. Is this um is this brother Daniel? Didn't you play um <laughs> football with Kabir and with uh uh you played in the NFL too, didn't you? Yes, sir. I uh, I played seven years. Um uh my first year is the, the year I met I met Kabir. Kabir was I want to say just, he had just at the time became a, let's say this, Christian. But <laughs> he actually, he actually, <laughs> he, he actually, Kabir was actually one to read his Bible. And mm. uh, so he would always challenge me, you know, and, and ever since then, he has continued, you know, to be a blessing to me and in, in, in my life, you know, for years. And, you know, seeing my brother now, and the the, the, the whole way I, I even came into the truth is obviously because of the father, but um, Kabir just sent me a video one day and said, hey, look this, look at this, because I know you're going to actually look at it and you're actually going to confirm it. Right. And he did. He, and I, I remember I watched like probably two minutes of the video, and immediately when I watched it, I stopped and I grabbed my Bible and I said, hold on, wait a minute. And it took me about two days to go through a 10-minute video, just reading, reading, reading. And since then, I wake up every morning, I've been like, man, how far does this rabbit hole go? Yes, sir. Just seeing a wickedness. Isn't that true? And it's, it's something else. It's something else. Um, but seeing you brothers and, and, and seeing the sisters and, and seeing what's happening to my wife, and, uh, <laughs> I'm wow. not a saying the support. Brother. Boy. Let me tell you but something. The court calls me at least. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. you're fine. I'm going to tell you something. You, you you better keep on running because your wife is going to push you to the kingdom. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she is. Now, I get reports, <laughs> boy, how she doing, brother. You you got a diamond in the rough. Yes, I do. She is definitely a blessing. I, I wanted to ask you tonight um i spoke to the brother samuel earlier um but i wanted to confirm it with you as well i got a good brother i've been speaking to in virginia beach he's a midshipman um so he's out on the water for six four, you know four or five six months at a time oh yeah um and he's really really down and distraught right now because he really want to observe he really want to be there for pass on and you know i've been talking to him so he asked me Hey, you know what should I be doing? How would I? How should I prepare? You know what should I be doing? And and obviously I was instructing him on, you know, repenting mainly, yeah, cleaning our house up, getting all this leaven out. And I was speaking to him about it just briefly. But I spoke to Brother Samuel uh, earlier, and he gave me a lot of wise counsel according to the scriptures, which really helped me out. And uh, I just figured I would call you too. And, 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 and just get some advice so I can, I can be able to tell my brother why he's out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, you told him right. Uh, you did. Remember that um, th this is, we're already justified by the blood of Christ. So in our obedience, are right, you following me? We're working towards sanctification, which I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, be the yes, Father's sir. will. But you've given him good instruction. And... Um, if he has access to the internet, if he does or doesn't, I don't know if he does or not. I don't know if they got the satellite or not. Tell him to go on there and, and just look at some of my old messages on Passover. And, man, okay. that would feed him better than, matter of fact, you'll probably learn more in that one sermon he will in five years of going to a Christian church. Okay, okay. I definitely, I'm but you're definitely, telling him right. definitely going to do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because he, 
I mean, he says he has nothing but time after work is over. He goes back to his room and he reads and, you know, and, and looking at videos and all them things. And I always try to keep him, uh, let's say this, very careful because I've I mean, and, and as you know, you see all these people out here calling themselves Hebrew Israelites. You see a whole bunch of foolishness, too. Yes, sir. So he's just trying to search, you know. And, and But I would definitely give him the advice that he gave me. And, and Pastor, I just wanted to say bless you. Bless the sisters. The sisters especially, too, because my wife, I always hear, uh, I don't know who was singing, but I always hear the sister, the sister song come on on her phone because she she's listening. And... Just being able to see my wife growing like she's growing and and standing strong too, you know. And my and my son, quick quick story before I let you go because I know that I don't want to take too much more time. No, go my ahead. My son was in school, and and mind you, we live in we live in the the brothers. Of, I told them on the uh, Marco Polo this week. I said we live in Carmel, Indiana, land of the Gentiles. So they start laughing. And uh, but my son was in school the other day, and all the kids jump up. And they said, hey, we're going to make a Christian club because we all Christian. And my son didn't jump up. And they said, well, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm not no Christian. And they said, well, what are you? He said, I'm an Israelite. (laughs) 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 That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) I'm I'm just really, really excited to get down there, me and my family. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, family. Bless you straightway. We are really, really excited. Hey, you really said excited. that um, every, pa- you talk with Pastor Corey almost every week, right? Yes, I talk to Pastor Corey all the time. Glory to the King. That's all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bless you, Pastor, and, and, and bless everybody down there. We're looking forward to seeing you guys in about two weeks here. Man, it's getting close. D-Day coming on up. We're glad yes, to see it in the dead season. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Bless Shabbat you. Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. That's Brother Bless Daniel. You. Glory to the King. That's Brother Daniel. Let's go to um, uh, North Carolina. Brother Aaron. It's Pastor Dowling in the Strictly True Radio Broadcast. I can help you, Brother Aaron. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. It's good to hear from you. You too. You too, man. What's up? No, a whole lot, man. I was kind of chopping it up with you there at the beginning of the week in the comment section of one of your videos talking about, like, how how these people are out here, you know, which which I'm very blessed, you know. I don't want to seem like I'm coming off as complaining or nothing, you know, because the Most High does introduce me to a lot of people that are of the way. Yes, sir. But... You know, there's a lot of people out here that try you. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, like like I was saying on that comment, like it was almost like they weren't even human because of the schizophrenia and just the way, you, and they want you to hate, you know. They want you to get that hate in your spirit, and then Satan enters in, and then he tries to take you on away from the way. If yes, you sir. keep that hate on you. I need to, I need to figure out how... To stay away from the bitterness. Are you, you are you talking about the people that are face to face or the one that's online? No, the face to face online. I don't really care too much. You know about what you that. do, the people. You got to deal with. It. Yeah, you know what you do. Yes, sir. This is what you do. First of all, number one, be careful who you talk to about Christ. Because remember, cast not your pearls before swine. And give not that which is holy unto a dog. Because you got to understand, man, you carrying the message of eternal life. And, brother, you got to see if these people are even worthy. You throw a little line out there and see if they bite and they ain't, man. Just tell them, man, that's all right, man. Everything's cool. Be blessed, man. Go ahead. Have a good day. And then go on your merry way. Shake the dust. Well, it's amazing. I, I got you on that. You know, it's amazing how the spirit moves. Because the Spirit will let you know. I mean, it's a miracle, man, because the Spirit will let you know who you can deal with and who you can't deal with. That's right. But, like, the regular people that you got to deal with, you know how people do all that backbiting and other people will go and spit in people's ear behind your back and stuff like that, and then, you, then you're wondering why you're getting these cold stares from these people, but yet you, you don't even know nothing about it because us Israelites don't play those games. You know what I mean? We don't go defending ourselves like that because we just don't play those games, you know? Right. And then 
it's like the people it's like the people that you deal with every day it's like they know who you are and they know what you're about but they use a different reason to hate you you know what i mean it's like they don't they don't come out and say they hate you because of the way you follow or the, the way that you the way that you have the spirit you know but they they try to come up with a different reason and hate you for that but use that as an excuse you know brother Aaron, these people what you're doing is you're looking at all the people who are submitted to Satan at his will. Are you following me? The Bible says they I hate you out of cause. So, man, when you look at them, you know, kind of kind of like give a little smirk, say, yeah, I see you, devil, but don't say it to them. Just say, yeah, I see you. I got your number. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. And then just go on your way. Because, you know, when you're a strong man, you know, it was like you say in, in a video you done a while back. It was you were like you know you need to you need to watch you really need to watch yourself. Everybody really needs to watch yourself because they'll try to they'll try to get you out there in their arena and then you don't been done went upside somebody's head or something like that and then they say you know they got you in their system and that's exactly the where they want you at in their system and and persecuting you that way. You oh know? yeah, yeah, but don't fall for the devil, man. You wiser than that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Man, keep watching. Keep listening, my brother. Keep keep commenting, too, okay? Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Bless you, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, I need y'all to become more proactive out there on the Internet. I truly do, man. Y'all comment more. I know most of y'all watch the videos. Y'all gone. Put a few words in us. Let's go to um, Alabama. Brother Ruben, call number two. Zero five two zero five. It's Pastor Dial in the Tribute Radio Broadcast. I can help, Brother Ruben. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, my brother. First of all, how them sons of thunder are doing? <laughs> oh, everybody's blessed. <laughs> and the wife, all right, doing everybody's okay. Doing excellent. Yes, yes, sir. She was the one that actually suggested that I call because I was I was thinking about calling in. You know, just giving a little quick testimony of something that happened to me this weekend. As I was thinking about it, she said, you ought to call in the blog talking. You know, uh, give, give that little uh, testimony. That's it. So uh, I was headed to work. I was headed to uh, northern Alabama on the route I was running. I had to go up in uh, Collinwood, Tennessee also. So I was on uh, a highway. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. I had been drinking coffee. So, I, you know, I jumped out. I had to pee real quick. So when I jumped out, I had checked my wallet while I was sitting in the truck, and I didn't push it all the way back down in my back pocket. So when I got out of the truck, it fell out. And I went on ahead, and I went to my first stop, and I realized, you know, I had lost my wallet. And I was probably about maybe four to five minutes to an hour away. So I said, man, you know, I had to come back that way on my way home. So I kind of had an idea why I stopped it. So uh, on my way back, I prayed and, you know, I had asked the Father to just let my wallet be there because I didn't have any money in it, really. And uh, I just, you know, I had all my important information, my credit card, debit card, yeah. CDL, license, medical card, and everything else. And so I said, you know, Father, just, you know, let this my wallet still be where I think it is and let everything still be in it. And if, this is a four-lane highway. It's, it's kind of, you know, rural in the country, but it's a big highway. So I go back, I look. Spent about four to five minutes looking for it, couldn't find it. So I said, uh, you know, thank you anyway, Father. By the time I get to the freeway, my phone rang. And uh, my, my mother called me and said, hey, you lost your wallet. I'm like, I don't know where you know I lost my wallet because I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> and she said, uh, a man called and left a message and said he found your wallet on the side of the highway. And uh, he was trying to give it back to you. So the guy, he, he, he called my mother because I had one of my dad's business cards in my wallet. And he saw that the names met because me and my dad got the same name. Right. And he, uh, you know, called and left him back and said he found my wallet. So I ended up getting my wallet back and, you know, I tried to uh, get a guy something. He wouldn't take anything. You know, I said, hey, I said, at least, you know, let me, you know, put some gas in your car or anything, you know, for your trouble. Nope, wouldn't take anything. Yep. I understand. That's a blessing, my brother. That is a true blessing. Yes, sir. He said his wife saw it on the side of the road as they was driving by, which is, you know, remember number the father because you want to pay no attention. This is all type of stuff, you know, on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. All the time. 
Y'all's good. But uh, that's all. That's all I had, pal. That's a beautiful testimony, man. Y'all's good because you know how crazy this world is today. Yes, sir. I, you know, I had all my personal information, you know, in my wallet, and it could have been not a good situation for me. I know, man. The most high. Well, I guess he heard your prayers. He probably sent somebody by there to secure it to make sure that there wouldn't nobody get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He did. All right, my brother. Oh, and another thing, too. I Another thing, I just wanted to thank you for a lot of the wisdom and advice you've given me over the years and actually putting it to good use. The Father has just been blessing me. You know, he's been blessing my house. He's been, you know, blessing me as far as, you know, uh, my job and everything. And it's all thanks to the things that you instructed, you know, me to do and, you know, maybe other brothers. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Make sure you hug my sister for you because, boy, I know she got her hands full with them four sons of thumb. I mean, you don't you got four? You got four or five of them now, Ruben. Uh, four. Yeah, four. Woo! Man, all boys. There's getting to be so many, I had to think about it. <laughs> you had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> they good boys, though. Hallelujah. Y'all doing a good job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, my brother. Bless y'all. Love y'all dearly. Yes, sir. Love you too. Bless you. Shalom. So much shalom. Let's go to uh, Brother Jose. 929-929. It's Pastor Dow. You know, Shepard, you heard your broadcast. I can help Brother Jose. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. Hey. Uh, I'm just calling in today. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll be trying to from smoking weed. You what? Yeah. From smoking weed. You been what? Been smoking weed. Oh, you still smoking weed? No, stop smoking weed. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to thank you for, like, the wisdom, the knowledge. Yeah, brother, you don't need that. What you need to do is, uh, hey, go on that line, man. See if you can get that Holy Spirit book, that Ruach book, man, and, 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 and see how good he is, man. He, he can take all that away 100% completely for sure and fill you up. All right, my brother? Yes, sir. Look that thing up, man. You won't regret it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything That's else, all. my brother? Nothing else. All right, my brother. Keep watching. Keep listening, okay? Stay connected. Yes, sir. Isn't that beautiful? Got the lyric from that. All right, last call tonight. Brother Jim, Wisconsin, 262-262. is Pastor Dow. You know, Shrimp Two Radio Broadcast. I can help Brother Jim. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. I was, uh, I was just just checking in with you to just, uh, just wish you a peaceful, beautiful Shabbat. And... Uh, Oh, gosh, it's been a beautiful day here. Uh, sister has passed out, smooth out. She's tired. And uh, we're just entering into the rest. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. We're looking forward to the trip coming up. Well, hallelujah. We're looking uh forward. Looks like the, the Most High is doing a lot of moving. A lot of moving, a lot of opening up people's eyes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he has. I was listening to a young man uh, who called who stationed uh, in Korea with the uh, Air Force. And, uh, you know, what is impressing me is all of the ears that are hearing that are not in this land, but that are scattered to the four corners, if you will. They're listening. The Most High is gathering his people. Yes, sir, he is. He certainly is. And uh, I think we uh, live in a time, you know, that is unlike any other. And... Uh, I'll tell you, 
just honestly, I there's there is nothing anymore that surprises me that I see and hear in this world. All right, my brother. All right. Well, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. You have a blessed evening. We're looking forward to the uh, preaching tomorrow. And God bless. Hallelujah. Bless my brother. Shabbat Shalom. King coming. King coming. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, Israel. Love you all dearly. The Father knows I do. Um, the only, you know, the one way you can gauge that I love y'all is by the truth that I tell you. I love all Israel. I got a wonderful family the Father's blessed me with here straightway. Um, and I love them all, every single one of them dearly. The Father's doing great things with the ministry. We don't even know what the half of it is, but he's doing it. We're along for this wonderful ride. We thank the Father uh, for the blessing and honor to be able to labor in this vineyard. That's just the truth. But anyway, hey, see y'all tomorrow morning. Be the Father's will, and I believe it is. It's about morning. I bless y'all in the sweet, precious, strong, victorious, mighty, overcoming name of our soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Shabbat Shalom. The King is coming. <laughs>